Hello, how are you? <laughs> Just a couple of people here now. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Thank you. How nice to see so many people uh, in uh, in the library. It's fine. You should take a wide-angle picture from here, really, as a memory Thank of you. this occasion. <coughs> I will take one. So. <laughs> 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 or two. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so uh, yes, I will repeat that. Uh, welcome to <coughs> to to you, Juan. Uh, Thank it's, you very uh, much. So nice to uh, have you here on the southern coast of Norway, which I guess you never visited before. Never. <coughs> and um, and uh, you're here because you have uh, published two books in Norwegian. Uh, this one, um, Pablo Escobar, my father, and this one in Norwegian, De Farn Min Aldri Fortalte. What's it in uh, Spanish? It's uh, Lo que mi padre nunca me contó. Okay, yeah. I think he's, <laughs> that's what he says. Yeah. That's what he says, yes. Impossible yes, yes. to check for me. Yes. Yeah. Um, <coughs> um, and this one is trust. Just, uh, just out. I would, I would like to say that these books sort of complete each other. Uh, th this one is an extensive story about what you know about your your father's life, yes. and also about what happened <coughs> after he died, 25 years ago this year. Yes, this year. And uh, and uh, in this book you have gone further into the sources and try to find out even more about yes. your your father so it it sort of completes a lot of the stories that's printed here thank you for saying that now <laughs> you have to buy both now <laughs> and mm. uh, yes that's right and uh, uh, having said that i must also say that you are one hell of a storyteller so uh, thank you very much and these stories are really dramatic it's uh, it's uh, like uh, you know <laughs> thrillers <laughs> one thriller after another um, well, I may say that uh, the stories, they are so strong that it's not that I'm a good storyteller, it's just the stories are very good and or very violent also. Okay, you know, so, so you mean they tell themselves? You yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I, think, I think that uh, you are, have a good management of your language so that you, you can tell this in a, in a, in a, in a very interesting way. Um, <coughs> now there are more than 300 people here. What kind of image do you think that uh, the average uh, person uh, have of your father? What, what uh, about what him as a man? Uh, about him as a, as a man and as a myth. Before Netflix or after Netflix? <laughs> <laughs> That's up to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I should say that. Netflix, uh, they did a great job uh, presenting my father like a hero, you know, that's, and I d really don't believe that my father is, is a hero. I think that he showed me and he showed us as uh, for the humanity the, the path we should not take. But uh, I really think that they presented my father, uh, they added like a lot of glamour to mm -hmm. his life. Mm -hmm. And they are showing him in a way that I never saw him. You know, he was like, when you watch Netflix, Narcos, and you see a man hiding in the best houses you could ever imagine. Oh. And you see a very rich and powerful man that no, nothing happens to him. Mm. And nobody dares to touch him. But I, I saw a different man. You know, I saw mm. a man that every time he had more power, more money, he was like forced to live. Mm -hmm. Thanks to that power and that m kind of money, in, a, in the poorest way you could ever imagine, you know, mm -hmm. it wasn't he wasn't hiding in mansions and big houses. He was just uh, living in houses where you can, perhaps there was uh, a lot of uh, heat or a lot of cold for him, and there was no windows or mm -hmm. very uncomfortable. So, mm -hmm. and they also present a man. That, of course, was violent, but I think he was even more violent in the real life. Mm. Yeah, so I receive a lot of uh, messages all over the world and in the social media. Mm. Uh, little kids, they send me messages like this. They say to me, 
look, I just saw Narcos, now I want to be like your father. Just how, how can I start? Like if I'm selling tickets to uh, yeah. run into that world. Do you get world. That anything from Christian Song? <laughs> uh, I, I have to <laughs> say no. <laughs> but if I, I'm, I'm very surprised because I, I may say that for almost every country in the world, I've received at least mm. one message from a from teenager yeah. or somebody like um, he wants to be like my dad. Mm. But even before Narcos, there was a lot of biographies, a, lo uh, a lot of movies among them, uh, one you made yourself, and, uh, yeah. and yes. a lot of uh, documentaries uh, about uh, your, f your father. Do you think uh, that he is presented as a, as a gangster or a hero? In the well, it's a, it's a very strange combination, you know. Uh, yesterday, uh, the the journalist who interviewed me, she thought that the word bandit was too soft <laughs> to describe my father. Yeah. And I told her that I will have to check again the dictionary what the bandit uh, word yeah. means, you know. But I really think that uh, my father's life is a big contradiction. Mm. If you study a little bit about him, you will find that he was a guy who was trying to help a lot of poor people and at the same time he was making a lot of uh, damage to uh, some other people so mm. if it's difficult to describe him as the man he was because if in a part of his life he was a good man but in the other side he was a very bad man and mm. at the same time he was a good father and he was teaching me uh, how to respect people uh, how to you know, to bring human values to our home, to our place, to our family. But at the same time, he was ordering, perhaps, to kill somebody in mm. outside of home. So I have to live with that contradiction all the time. And that's what makes it more hard to describe a man who, if you ask to the poorest people in Colombia, perhaps they will say to you that they love Pablo Escobar, they, they thank him for uh, being able to help the poorest people in the country, but if you ask some other part of the country, they will say <coughs> the opposite. Mm. You, in, in your first book, the, this contradiction is very, very visible. You, you uh, <coughs> are very, very, uh, you, you, you describe your father as a loving man yes. towards you. Yes. You you also state that <coughs> you love him, and uh, and uh, he's always a good father. <coughs> uh, but from you were seven years old, you were aware that he also could order somebody to be killed. Or uh, well, it was also hard for me because you know I was just a little kid when he approached to me and he said, "Look, son, I am a bandit, and that's what I do for a living." So. And that happened in the year 1984, after he ordered the killing of the Minister of Justice, uh, Rodrigo Lara Bonilla. Mm. And um, he, he quit from being a politician, and then he started a big war against the Colombian government. Mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, so he, 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 he sort of uh, made his own, his own state in, in the state. Yes, it was like a parallel kind of uh, government or power. Mm -hmm. because I saw him, uh, in a way, like giving orders to our president, you know, mm. and the next day I, I saw the results of, of that. Mm. I, I saw my father reading the newspaper and perhaps there was a new law that would benefit the drug laws if they surrendered to the authorities. And the next day my father just said, no, I, don't, I didn't like this, so I have to make some changes, and he wrote some letters. And the next day there was another kind of law that correct uh, what he wanted, you know, and he mm. built his own prison and escaped when he wanted, so it was, he had a lot of power. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember if there isn't somebody in in um, in the world story who built his own prison, you know. I think he was the first and the last. <laughs> Prisons, but yeah. also churches. Uh, and uh, and airstrip uh, and, uh, and football and football yeah. fields and yeah. uh, and even a very spectacular uh, zoo, a zoological yes. garden yes. with yes. Uh, curious animals. 
My Jurassic Park. <laughs> and, the yes. and the Jurassic Park, yes. yes. So he really had some visions. Well, he had a lot of money and power, so I think when, when you can have all those things together, mm -hmm. uh, you start making a lot of crazy things, you know. It's <laughs> like, you yes. know, I interviewed the guy who was... Uh, like uh, keeping the money for him in the United States, and, and I ask him one question, look, um, why don't you tell me uh, about the good times, you know, when you were just like winning lots of money, and and how many, how much money did you saw that my father was just uh, winning every day? And he told me that in a weekend, Miami, mm -hmm. from 50 to 70 million dollars each weekend. So... Yes. And it was only one city, and imagine how much money he he was winning every day. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> well, uh, has it ever been been a thorough calculation of how much money he he made? It well, says I asked fo forty I asked billion, forty billion dollars is the number from Wikipedia. But uh, well, well, Wikipedia, in Wikipedia, <laughs> I I look, and in Wikipedia, I, I appear dead. <laughs> so be careful <laughs> with Wikipedia. <laughs> yes. You know, I had to edit. Yeah, I'm yeah. not that already. It's very so difficult to edit Wikipedia. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I did that, but I don't know. Perhaps somebody <laughs> wants me dead. But, <laughs> but it's uh, it's very difficult, of course, because this money were going in and out and uh, well, uh, back and forth. And also, my father, he spent a lot of money in corruption, you know. This business won't be as successful as it is mm. if it's not uh, thanks to corruption. And that's, that takes a lot of money to keep the, money, the business working. Mm -hmm. uh, so he really spent a lot of money uh, in corruption and also violence. Nobody, nobody uh, works for free, you know. Nobody go and just put a bomb in a park just for nothing, just because they love my father? No. Of course, they they were asking for a lot of mommy, uh, money, and my father was uh, known for paying a lot of money for that kind of actions. Yes, you, 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 you write in the book that he was always paying people well. Very well. When they were uh, sent out to kill somebody or to steal or to smuggle or whatever. Yes. yes. He was known to to be a good employer? Well, in a way, if you <laughs> you are the one who says that, and <laughs> I'm not saying that. <laughs> well, a good employer who, who, who pays his people... Uh, <laughs> more, pay. more than they expect. More than they expect, yes. yes. Uh, but uh, he, com he came from, from, uh, from a very simple background. Yes, he, he, he was he a farmer. You know, yeah. All the family, they live in, in the countryside. So. Mm -hmm. My grandmother, she was a school teacher, and my grandfather, he, he just, he had like uh, two cows and some potatoes and no, nothing more than that, you know, mm -hmm. very poor family. And they have, they were forced to escape from the political violence of Colombia. Mm -hmm. the, you know, the, the two big parties, they, they fought very, in a very violent way, they cut people heads just because mm. they were part of the other side you know so they have to escape from that and that's what brings my father to medellin finally mm -hmm. and he he started his uh, criminal career by by making false uh, testimonies for for school yes there are a lot of doctors in colombia and uh, <laughs> people who <laughs> bought <laughs> the title from my father yeah, yeah. So, so from from the beginning, he had a sort of uh, tendency of breaking the law. Or you know, I feel that he enjoyed that. Mm. He was like always pushing things as far as he could. You know, he was like always going as far as he he wanted, and and in a way, he enjoyed that. I don't know why, but he, he was that kind of man. Yeah, uh, so, so we moved from that to smuggling cigarettes yes. and... Uh, Every day more crime and <sighs> you get deeper, you know. Yeah, but at a, at, at a certain time he must have had the sort of vision that he could do this really big time. Well, yes, he was like a smuggler, but he was using like TVs, radios mm -hmm. and just uh, home appliances and mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. <coughs> and he understood that 
<coughs> cocaine could be more profitable than mm. a TV. Yeah, of course. But that, uh, that's thanks to prohibition, you know. That that's all. That also really helped my father to uh, became the man he was. Yes. D would you say that he was at the right place at the right moment? Yes. If you if you imagine uh, the same time without prohibition, there will be no books about Pablo Escobar. Mm -hmm. No story. That's right. And he. Um, he uh, he was, as I say now, he, um, to you, a good father, a loving father, to you and your sister, and uh, and a family man. And at the other uh, other hand, he was a very brutal gangster. Mm -hmm. Is this a mystery to you? How how one man can can be both these th things at one time? Well, I think. Um, he showed us how far can a human being go in terms of violence and also in terms of love, mm. you know, because he also decided to kill himself uh, once he understood that the it was the only way out for us as a family. Mm. So I think, yes, it's, it's difficult to understand, you know, I, I don't think there's a similar case uh, of a man that could be uh, so powerful and such a loving father and such a violent man at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, I mentioned that it's 25 years since he died, 2nd of December 1993. Yes. Uh, can you describe uh, how you experienced those last days in Pablo Escobar's life? Well, in in this book, in the you're telling the story. Yes, here. I no. I interview and I found the 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 three people who took care of him mm -hmm. in the last 72 hours of his life. And they describe a man, a very different man than the father I knew. Mm -hmm. uh, my father was always a very positive man. He was always thinking that everything will be all right, nothing will happen. and that There would be a way out? Yes, yeah. always mm -hmm. and always for him. There, there was always a way out. But uh, in this time of his life, it's like he felt that he was losing control of uh, the situation and then he was uh, committing a lot of mistakes using the phone, he never used the phone and knowing of course uh, for sure that he was going to be traced and the call will help the police or the enemies to find him and that's what happened at the end, you know, if you check the recordings when we were staying at the hotel in Bogota mm -hmm. and we received several calls from my father Mm -hmm. And I was just keep saying to him, don't call anymore, please don't call anymore, we are good, just mm. don't call anymore, because he teach me that uh, with every phone call you could be uh, found very easily. Mm -hmm. But he never listened and he kept calling and until he, he was in a fight with the enemies, not with the police. Mm -hmm. They said it was the police, but that nothing never happened. You were talking to him uh, during ten this minutes time? before he died. It was yes. the the last voice uh, he heard. It was mine. What did he say? I will call you back uh, very soon. Mm -hmm. And we were just discussing uh, the, the how to answer an interview that I received in the hotel. It was for him, and he wanted to say uh, what would be the conditions for him to surrender for the second time to the government. Mm -hmm. Because he was on the run. Uh, he was on the run and he offered uh, to surrender mm -hmm. to the government again without any kind of conditions. Mm -hmm. The only one was to protect uh, the family and that was the only condition. Mm -hmm. But they wanted my father dead so nobody really paid attention to that. Mm -hmm. Then he was, he was shot uh, once. Um, in uh, twice, uh, one in the knee, even in the one in the leg, and, and once in then the shoulder, the shoulder, and yes. after that he killed himself. Yes, that's what you state. Uh, the police claim that they killed him. Yes, or there is a certain policeman who said that I fired the shot. Well, <coughs> I may say that it's very funny because uh, in the same publishing house that I originally published my book, mm. we have two other books. One is for the guy who swears that killed my father and one is uh, very very new. It's from our uh, actual vice president of Colombia, yes. General Naranjo. Mm -hmm. 
and he said to this guy, you didn't do it. So not even between policemen uh, no. agree who really killed my father. Mm -hmm. And recently I had the opportunity to publish my second documentary, and it's called Escobar Exposed. And we found uh, some uh, very new evidence about mm -hmm. uh, how my father died, and we found an official police report from the Colombian police mm -hmm. to the United States Embassy. And they recently released those documents because they were like s top secret. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know why they released <coughs> this, but uh, of course, once you see that, you will know that the police wasn't in the crime scene because the kind of report the sa they sent to the United States Embassy in Bogota, it says that they killed my father in the roof of a shopping mall. Mm -hmm. And I think everybody here, if somebody saw the, the images, my father died in a modest neighborhood and it wasn't in a shopping mall it was just a, a roof of a small house mm. so that puts the police very far away from the crime scene right and i don't and they will never answer what they were doing there you know yes and you also um, as a pr as a proof you you also mentioned that what your father had said to you well many times yes he taught he taught me how to kill myself because there was a big risk to be caught by our own enemies and tortured. Mm -hmm. So he always mm, told me, look, if you feel that uh, your enemies or our enemies are going to, don't let them uh, bring you alive because mm -hmm. you will suffer a lot. It's better if you kill yourself. Mm -hmm. And he taught, uh, he, he teach me how to kill myself if that was be the situation. Mm -hmm. And he, uh, he explained to me why I it wasn't good, a good idea to shoot myself in uh, in this part, or this part is, was just the right year. Mm. And he said to me that he interviewed some doctors just to make sure that, uh, to find out what which was the right spot to put a bullet and to end with your life in a second. And it was the right year, and it was exactly the place where the doctors found uh, the mm. bullet who killed him. Oh. So you feel sure that he, he did this himself? And also I have uh, some other uh, proofs of that. You know, when I was mm, publishing my first book in Colombia and explaining this to some very well-known journalist, I received from, a, from my editor a call, and he, he, he told me that the guy who was um, the pilot of the chopper, who was very near my, where my father died. Mm. When I was speaking uh, to the radio <coughs> station, yeah. uh, he received the call at the same time and he said to my editor, uh, Juan Pablo is saying the truth about how his father died. But it was uh, I, I met the pilot after that and he assured me that also. And I also had the, the chance to receive messages uh, from the guys who made the autopsy. Mm -hmm. And they send us uh, the same message uh, that they were forced to erase from the final report the word uh, suicide. Mm -hmm. But uh, they believe that us as a family, we had the right to know how my father ended his life. Yeah. You also, um, um, uh, uh, contrary to the version that uh, is shown in Narcos, you you say right that your father died as a very lonely man he was a, uh, a lonely man in yes. in in every sense yes in also every sense. alone oh, absolutely alone everybody uh, left him and betrayed him you know s the only ones who never betrayed him was my mother my little sister and myself mm. the rest there was no one there okay well this is a <coughs> drama really Shakespearean dimensions. Uh. And I should say one more thing, you know, for me it's not important how my father died. You no. know, it's the real fact is he died. It doesn't matter if, uh, if a piano fell or a truck <laughs> he hit him, you know, it's just... But I, uh, I am very committed uh, to tell the truth about yeah. my father's story because if we hide something, if we don't share everything we know about him, mm. 
we won't learn the, the real lessons that mm -hmm. we have to learn from these kind of experiences. That's right. And your first reaction, 16-year-old uh, Juan Pablo was interviewed by, by a journalist and yes. you said... I wanted to kill everybody. Yeah. Yes, I committed a big mistake. <coughs> I was um, informed that I was being recorded uh, because it was illegal. I was a minor, and she forgot uh, <coughs> to go to the ethic class and when she was studying as a journalist. <laughs> and that brought me a lot of trouble, you know, because five seconds of threats became in 25 years of uh, exile. You know, yeah. it's like, yeah. and that really teach me one of the biggest lessons in life that. Um, our own words can destroy ourselves yes. and can destroy a lot of people and a lot of hope yeah. and can change the reality uh, in what we live. You, you withdrew this uh, statement uh, very quickly, uh, the same day. Ten minutes, yes. that's what it, it took me to think deeply, okay, I'm going to kill everybody, how, how am I going to do this? Mm -hmm. And I start to remember very quickly how many times I was against my own father's actions because mm -hmm. I never applauded my father to because of his violence. I think I was the only man who was ne next to him who was saying, you are wrong, you are just doing things in, in the bad way and that's not a good thing to do. Mm -hmm. I asked him many times to stop the bombings and but he always answered to me that I was forgetting that the first bomb in Colombia exploded in my own home and against my own little sister and my mother. So he was like full of excuses for violence and he always like find explanation for everything. Mm. Um, but I was, um, I remember that when he surrendered to La Catedral prison, he, he made a speech, a public speech, while he was doing that and he dedicated uh, his surrender to his uh, 14 uh, pacifist uh, year old son you know it's, uh, mm -hmm. so i remembered him that he he really knew that i was against his way of living mm -hmm. and i remember that at the same time when i was threatening the country so i what's the point of mm -hmm. being a guy like my father i would know how this story started and i know how mm -hmm. it will end so I really changed my mind very quickly and start calling again the journalist to say, I'm sorry, I made a mistake, I, say, I said the wrong words and I had a lot of pain because of my father, uh, because my father died and I reacted in the wrong way. Mm. Uh, and I never understood that uh, perhaps it's, it could be understandable if a young guy like without a father like my father mm. could say that I want to kill everybody. It's no, nobody will take you seriously. But if I am the son of Pablo Escobar mm. and I said the same words, yeah. uh, it's, it's different, you know. So there was a immediately a price on your head? Four million dollars, yes. But don't get excited, nobody's going to pay you. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, mm. 25 years has come by yeah. and, and you, yeah. you have managed uh, to stay alive. Yes, it's a miracle that I'm here speaking with you and sharing the, the experiences with the audience and and it's, it's truly a miracle that I'm here. Mm. I was uh, never supposed to live so much time, you know, and i um, very happy to live uh, some extra hours. <laughs> that's, that's good. Let's hope it lasts. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and then... Um, with your father's death, a new chapter in 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 uh, your life started yes. for you and your mother and your sister Manuela. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, you ha you were again, in a way, on the run, and you were targets for for a lot of. Uh, well, all we inherited not also my father's fortune, but also my father's enemies, yes. and they approached to us very quickly, and it was very easy to negotiate with them because they said to us, if you hide uh, one coin, we will kill you. Mm -hmm. So it was a very fast negotiation with them, them you know. Was just was gave yeah. them all to save uh, our lives. And there was not even one guarantee that they will keep us alive. Mm -hmm. It was just 
the last thing we could do is just give them everything and that's how my mother uh, ended up like making peace with all the cartels of Colombia at the mm. time. Uh, did a lot of people think that there was a lot of money uh, left behind and uh, that they deserved a part of it? Yes, of course, but I, I also should say that because my father, uh, my father's enemies, they were friends at the beginning, so they, they, they were really aware of how much money good my father had at the time mm. when he died, you know, because they knew that they attack a lot uh, the financial resources of my father. Mm -hmm. And so uh, in those times, my father al almost spent all of his money. So mm. he didn't have too much cash and, and also the most of the properties were, were already seized by the authorities. Mm. So, uh, of course, there was a lot of uh, properties and vehicles and apartments and lots and a lot of... Uh, money uh, that the authorities didn't knew about it uh -huh. but my father's enemies of course they did kn knew because they tortured a lot of people and because they were friends of my father also mm -hmm. but uh, uh, who were worst uh, the f the friends of your father or the enemies of your father well even the cali cartel was a friend of my father before they became enemies you know mm -hmm. so it's almost everyone you know because of course in those in those times it was the Cali Cartel who run mm. everybody who they were the real patron, you know, the, at the time. So they they just make big meetings with all of the leaders of the cities and the cartels and they just said to my mom, You have to bring everything to the table and we will choose what it will be for us and then everything will be decided in, in this in the same meeting but you have ten days to bring an offer. Mm -hmm. So how di what did this mean to to your way of life? You had to be on the run? Uh. Well, she was asking uh, to the Cali cartel leaders not to kill me because uh, she was told, uh, don't worry, you, nothing's going to happen to you because we follow you uh, for years and years and you never uh, ask your own husband to kill somebody you always ask him to make peace with, with us as his enemies. So we respect you as a woman because you were always just there for him to support him, mm -hmm. but never to encourage him to be a more violent man. Mm -hmm. That's why we are not killing you or not even your daughter, but uh, we are going to kill your son. Mm -hmm. That's how they started the meeting. So uh, she was like crying a lot because... And I kept asking her, look, uh, how was the meeting? And she, was, she couldn't tell me the, the truth because she knew that I was going to die. Mm. And so it was very hard for her as a woman just to maintain her own peace and deal with these guys. That they, were, they, were, they were the most violent guys after my father, you know. So, uh, so uh, in the end you had to leave the country? Yes, that that was one of the uh, conditions. They told me if you ever come back, we kill you. But <coughs> it must have been a strange uh, thing that no country would receive you. Not even the Vatican, imagine. <laughs> Not even the Vatican. <laughs> I asked the Vatican, <laughs> but they say no. Mm. And I also asked uh, the Red Cross and the United Nations. Mm. And it's like... Oh, we have all the laws that protect us, but mm -hmm. not the family of Pablo Escobar. They are not written for that. Mm -hmm. And I was very um, uh, sad because of that, because I read all the human rights, and they are very beautiful, they look very beautiful, but nobody practiced that. Mm -hmm. You know, In the real world, they are just there for to print books, but not to really uh, take responsibility mm -hmm. for what that really means, you know, yeah. and, and we ask uh, for a lot of help to our own government. And at the end, you know, we receive more help from my father's enemies than from the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. that, that's true. And in this book, I say thank, I thank them because they, they took all the money, but they leave me alive 
if with the possibility to like reinvent myself mm. as a man mm. so in the end you had to there was one country in the world that would receive you but not for free not for free <laughs> no <laughs> mozambique mozambique yes yes mm. yes um there was no internet in uh, that time yet. so we tried to find some information about Mozambique and there was none, you know, it's just two lines. It says civilian war and mm. Portuguese uh, culture and uh, that was all. There was no guidebooks in the shops? No, <laughs> no, no, nothing, nothing. We couldn't find anything. And it was our only option to uh, escape from my father's and all the country's violence. Mm -hmm. So we went there and we changed our names because even to fly there it was impossible you know we asked france to let us just stay one day and they put so many conditions mm. that it's like okay you are saying no in a very polite way uh, so we tried uh, several countries because we have to make at least one stop to go there mm. and it was impossible so the only way out it was to change our own names yeah do you change your name to sebastian marroquin yes juan mm. sebastian juan sebastian yes right. i kept one, just because if somebody could make a mistake in, in an airport, somebody mm. from my family, mm. if they they call me, they usually call me Juan, not Pablo, so just Juan. Okay. So so we kept the the Juan. Mm. But you still uh, use the name Sebastian Marroquin. Yes, yes. I my passport mm. says Sebastian. But you didn't stay so long in uh, in uh, Mozambique. We went there to live. Ten years and we stayed four days. <laughs> it's uh, very, <laughs> very hard. Uh, you know, I was very worried because we went there and we were starving and we sent somebody to the supermarket and the girl who went there, they, she came without any bags, you know. Mm -hmm. And we asked her what happened and did you find a supermarket? Yes, I did. And why didn't you buy some food? Because it was open, yes, it was open, but there was no food inside. Hmm. So imagine, I felt like, where are we now? And it's yes. like I prefer <laughs> to go back to Colombia and get killed it's fast. You know, it was, it was a better future for me. <laughs> imagine me starving. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. So, so, uh, so you, you you left and you had you left through Ecuador and. Peru yes and yes finally ended up in uh, Argentina in Ecuador Peru Argentina and but then did they know who you were at the time since you no because we were using uh, the new passports yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but in Argentina I guess you're still living in Argentina yes uh, 24 years ago yes, yes. Uh, could you go back to Colombia if you had wanted to well I waited 14 years to come back for the first time mm -hmm. uh, once I left the country and it was because of the meeting that I was going to have with the Galan, uh, Luis Carlos Galan sons, and mm -hmm. also the the son of the Minister of Justice, yeah. because I wrote them a letter and as, uh, to ask for their forgiveness for my mm -hmm. father's actions against their own fathers and and family, and they asked me to come to Colombia to meet them. So I I went there even even if I was very afraid because. I always remember the threat, mm -hmm. but I thought it was more important that meeting than the threats. Yeah, and that's why um, we made the documentary. Mm. Yeah, thanks to that. The meeting. documentary, my father's sins uh, of my father. The sins of my sins father. Of my father, yes. Which is very widely acclaimed and have won a lot of prizes. Yes, and it's and a documentary where you use a lot of the yes. the facts from this book. Yes, and you can. You can see him the the documentary in YouTube. There's a lot of piracy, so it will be able to <laughs> you. And we didn't do that for the money. We just wanted to tell the true story yeah. and to show to the people the real facts. And so we never never did that for the money. So it's, mm -hmm. it's easily you can easily find. Well, it's the first uh, f first uh, sort of uh, work that you where you state your your. Uh, present agenda to to reconcile with people to reconcile with your father's uh, 
enemies yes. and uh, and uh, ask them for forgiveness on behalf of your father. Yes. Uh, <coughs> and uh, well, you s uh, in both of these books, you, you state that uh, that's that's what you want to do with your life. Yes, uh, and and this new book is is also about forgiveness. I think because. You read it, and you know that I met Aaron, uh, the Barry Seal's son, mm -hmm. the guy who's, uh, you know, he was the Tom Cruise, was like uh, in the uh, movie American Made. He, American he made, made yes. very famous again Barry Seal's story. Mm -hmm. So we became very close friends with Aaron, and also I met the paramilitary. Bobby Seals was the was the pilot who 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 really made a lot of trips. Well, for your father. Yeah, to inform you a little bit who was Barry Seal, he was a CIA agent and also a DA informant. Mm -hmm. And he worked with my father, he worked for the CIA, he worked for the DA, worked for he everybody. worked for yeah. himself and for everybody. Yeah. He was kind of the North American Pablo Escobar. Yes. And so they have more than one, I assure you that, but they never show uh, the real names of the yes, gangsters. But probably he was also very corrupt. And uh, absolutely, and yeah. he was like uh, laughing about everything. He yeah. didn't care. You know, I spoke that with his son, and and he assured me that he even uh, contacted me, saying mm -hmm. that I that I should uh, forgive his own father for being able to speak against my father in a trial. So uh, Aaron, Aaron his, Hill, his yes. son, yes, his son, yes, it was. It, 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 <coughs> you and he has uh, sort of made friends. Yes, yes. Have a, um, even though his your father killed the. Uh, yes, he killed his own seals. father in 1986 yeah. in mm -hmm. the United States. Yeah. Yes, it was, it's something that I, I even if today I receive uh, some message from him, I feel like not also very bad but uh, very happy at the same time because. This kind of relationship is almost impossible to have, you know. Mm. To mm. And they also uh, went deeper with his own mom. They contact the guys who really pulled the trigger and killed mm. uh, Barry Seal. And they said to those guys that they were willing to forgive them and that they don't feel any kind of hate uh, for them. So that's. They really teach me a lot of lessons about forgiveness and reconciliation. Mm. I thought that I knew something about it, but every time I knew uh, some of my father's victims, I I received from them a lot of uh, respect, a lot of love, and a lot of hope too. Mm. And this book, I think, is also about that. It's not also about the how much violence my father uh, can be to a lot of families, but also. Uh, that we are all willing to reconciliate mm. and we are all willing to forgive. And it's not the same to forgive than to forget. There's a big difference there. You know, mm -hmm. it's forgiveness is, for me, it's about healing. And that's, that's a big difference. Healing of the soul? Yes, yes. Because if you don't forgive, you die of hate. Mm. Right, and you, you, also, you have also uh, had contact with the um, son of uh, of, uh, of the Minister of uh, Justice, uh, Lara, Lara, who was killed by your father, and also Galan, who was yes. a candidate for presidency. Yeah, he was, he was also killed. Yes, and, and you have you have met uh, the sons of these uh, people. Yes, and also uh, I spoke with William Rodriguez Abadia. He's yes. the son of uh, Miguel Rodriguez, the head of the. Mm -hmm. Cali Cartel, the guy who they put us the bomb in the Monaco building in 1988. Mm -hmm. It was uh, 700 kilos of dynamite bomb. Where you uh, and your mother and the sister could have been killed? Absolutely. It's a mm -hmm. miracle that we survived that mm -hmm. uh, terrorist attack because all the windows in the whole city, one kilometer, mm -hmm. they, they were all destroyed. You know. It was just a miracle. I, every time I can see the the, the photos of the building, I, I just kept asking myself, how could we survive mm. to a thing like that? <coughs> but you, but you now are friends with the son of the guy who <laughs> yes who, who has been um, you have, yeah. and also with William Rodriguez. You know, it's mm. and I'm very surprised because 
if we um, continue our lives believing the, that we should follow the same rules from the past, we should kill each other if we see, if we met in some kind of uh, reunion, you know. So mm -hmm. for me, that's very good that we change our minds and that we forget uh, what we should do if we follow our father's directions yeah. and vendetta, vendetta culture. Vendetta yeah. culture, yes. Yeah. I think we were all tired of the violence we lived and we suffer, mm. and we don't want that for our sons and families. Mm. We want to stop that. Yeah. Um, Colombia is a <coughs> is a strange uh, country with a lot of uh, lot of violence, but also uh, a lot of uh, conflicts that are very difficult to to understand when you look at it from the outside. Uh, in 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 the in the book, you also uh, write about your father's relations with uh, with one of the uh, communist groups, the guerrilla groups, mm -hmm. M nineteen. M nineteen, yes. Who also behaved as criminals. They uh, do now. They are politicians. Now they are politicians. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but they found the right place. Yeah. But okay. they kidnapped the daughter of one of your father's associates. Yeah, the the sisters. The uh, sister, the Ochoa, yeah. One of the Ochoa sisters. And my father, he felt like uh, a very close friend of the lefty uh, groups in Colombia, and he helped them a lot. But the M19 group, they were just trying to find uh, financial resources, mm. and they start kidnapping. Uh, families related with the uh, drug lords. Mm -hmm. So when my father um, was informed about this, he, he was the founder of the first paramilitary group of the, the Colombian story. Mm -hmm. It was called uh, Death to Kidnappers, and and that's why that's one of the examples that I used uh, why my father lived such a contradiction in mm -hmm. life mm -hmm. because he was helping. Uh, the left wing groups and but at the same time he was uh, like uh, building one of the biggest and most deadliest right wing groups to kill the left to, to, to kill the left wing yes and so and they they also he also engaged them to work for him yes and then they hi he hired them to go yeah. to the uh, palace of justice in colombia so they would, they could uh, burn all the files against him and his organization. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yes, and but uh, they denied this. I have to. They denied this in in my book mm -hmm. because I thought it, it's the best. It was to give them the opportunity to say what they want. Mm. Uh, at the end, it would be the reader who will say what he thinks about the story. But I have to say that. They deny that my father was involved mm. in this operation, but of course there are so many uh, proofs that demonstrate the opposite. Mm. I just gave them the opportunity to speak. To give their version. Mm. Yeah. Yes, mm. and to check every chapter so I won't get killed so fast. <laughs> okay. Um, of course, the, the cor corruption uh, in in Colombia, is quite if it's pretty obvious. I mean that uh, that the, uh, your father had to pay off policemen, yes. and soldiers, and politicians to be able to work like he did. But in this book, you also claim that that uh, people from the CIA and from the DEA, uh, the Drugs Enforcement Agency in in the United States, were corrupt and took money to yes. to to close their eyes. For for the smuggling, especially at the height of, of your father's career, 1986 to 1989. Yes, and that that gave me uh, a lot of fear, you know, to to publish this book, and also my publishers they were a little bit afraid of that. But I really think that we found a lot of evidence of that, and I should say that it's impossible for me to assure that the whole CIA and the whole DEA were involved, of course not. Mm. But at least the ones who run the Miami <coughs> International Airport, yes, because uh, I tell a story 
about my father sending like every week, every week, 800 kilos of cocaine to the United States. Mm -hmm. um, he did that for three years and no, not even a single gram of cocaine was seized. Mm -hmm. So he made a lot of money and of course the corrupt officials from the DEA, they were just uh, asking for $3,000 at least per kilo they allowed to come to the United States. Mm -hmm. And the thing is that they were using commercial airlines, uh, regular passengers, uh, everybody was involved, even the, the airline, everybody was part of the corruption system mm -hmm. that made that possible. So my father, like, he ended up sending like more than 90,000 kilos at least mm -hmm. in three years. And of course, I, I made made some maths about the, the operation, how much money that means, you know, and mm -hmm. for my father's pocket, he got like uh, $800 million, and for the DEA corrupt officers, like $400 million. Mm -hmm. And for the U.S. cartels, the one that doesn't exist, uh, like $5,000 million. Mm. Yes, there's a... Uh, <coughs> you have a... A short uh, paragraph in your book where where you write that there's a there's a guy who who advises your uh, father on on uh, where to put his money, and yes. he ha has some some suggestions uh, in the stock market and so on. And your father answers, "I'm sorry, but I don't do legal business." Yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. You cannot uh, win a lot of money doing legal business. Mm -hmm. That's true. So he didn't like to pay taxes, uh, right? Yes. But you you also write about his uh, his uh, his <coughs> uh, uh, what do you call it uh, money keeper <laughs> or uh, yes yes the like the, the treasurer the, the treasurer yes yes the, the guy who, f who <coughs> writes the books <laughs> yes and or he he was explaining to me how they kept uh, so much money mm -hmm. he ha he owned more than 25 uh, houses all around the country mm -hmm. and they have like high tech basements with uh, very hard to find uh, uh, way uh, from the authorities every time they went to those houses they never found anything so mm -hmm. and they were full of money and this guy told me that he was he had to go every day to the banks Mm -hmm. just to send the money to <coughs> Colombia and they never stopped counting the money mm -hmm. uh, because he went uh, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. and they never finish mm. to count all that money. Too much work. Yes, poor guy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the one of the stories that I, that I think we should learn a lot from that, mm -hmm. this guy was like handling all of the money of my dad, you know, so, and he ended up very poor. That's true. Mm. I saw him when I, he, he was taking the bus, you know, he didn't have any money, not even for a taxi. Mm -hmm. And that's the real lessons that we don't see in narcos, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. because everybody's like partying every day, you know. Mm. And I see this guy, uh, now he's very poor and he was one of the richest. Mm. And that's the lessons we should uh, share with the youngest people so they will learn that there's no point to be a drug dealer because you will end up in jail or death or yeah. even poorer than when you started. It's, uh, yeah, it's a very big chance that you will end up uh, like your father. Yes. Uh, yeah. yes. Uh, and... Um, well, uh, we learned uh, a lot about your, your 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 father through this conversation. But at one time, you also asked your mother, <coughs> "Yes, what, uh, what, w how could you fall in love with him? What, what made you fall in love with uh, Pablo?" With a guy like him, yes. Yeah. Well, and I should say that uh, I always remember that she fell in love not with the Pablo Escobar we all know today. Mm -hmm. Uh, they escaped mm. to get married against the, all the, of the families. Mm. And when she married him, um, 
there was no money, there was no power, and there was no future for them. Mm -hmm. So it was impossible for her to know what was going to happen. And uh, the only sin that she committed was just to stay there until he died. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, she, she, was, she kept the promise of loving him and taking care of him until he, uh, until death, mm. uh, just uh, come to our home. Yes. So that's uh, something my father always, of course, if, when he got so much uh, money and he was very rich, of course he was taking care of my mom, but he gave her a lot of reasons to for the divorce, of mm. course. Mm. Imagine how many uh, mistresses and girls he had, but she always stayed there and she tried to uh, get the divorce, but it was impossible, you know, it's just he, o he once answered to, hi to her that um, he preferred to be dead than divorced. Mm. As he also gives a very warm description of him. Uh, Depends how you take that. <laughs> I mean, in, 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 in the book. In, in the book. <coughs> yes, yes. Um, but let's talk about, uh, before we uh, end the, the conversation, a, a, a little more about uh, uh, Narcos, <coughs> because you also have a, a chapter about Narcos yes. here. Uh, I have to, s to thank Netflix, because they are really helping me <laughs> with the book sales. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, do you pay so them? So I'm not against uh, them. I'm do, you, do you pay them? Uh. <laughs> well, I don't think they need my money. <laughs> no, I don't think so either. But At least uh, they should give me a free account. Max. Of course. They Come should. on. Yes, yes, have yes, to pay yes. monthly to them. But you have to, you have to pay fair. like everybody yeah. else. <laughs> That's <laughs> unfair, man. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, but when you heard that they were going to make a TV series uh, uh, from the life of your, of your father, you, you, you contacted them. Yes, I found out that they were about to uh, start with that, and I contacted them six months before. Mm. And I, of course, I was excited about the possibility of being part of that project because I believe that uh, they were, will be very open to receive me, and I offered them full access to my father's archives. And I'm, I'm talking about thousands of uh, photographs, uh, home videos, letters, handwritten letters from uh, my father. And I was more surprised because they, they just said to me that they knew enough, they knew more than me. Mm -hmm. So they, they were an interest in hiring me for the project. Mm -hmm. So now I understand why they, they were already bought the DEA version of Pablo Escobar and that's what uh, narcos is yes, about because the, uh, the 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 storyteller in in the series is a is a the DA, two DA, DA, DA agents. agents yes. Yeah, imagine myself with the Netflix guys and the DA agents, mm -hmm. and <laughs> me asking, okay, when are we going to uh, record the chapter when you work with my father? Mm -hmm. <laughs> perhaps that. <laughs> But I that was one of the reasons why, why they didn't hire me. <coughs> but I guess they, they, they stole a little from your book as well. <laughs> Not no, so tell little. me which part so I will sue them. <laughs> <laughs> sue them, yes, yes. Um, but what you did after you watched the second season of the series uh, at one stretch, you, you wrote something on Facebook. Yes, well, I, for the second season, I, I just, I was writing the, this book, and, and I was in Medellin, I remember. And I called my editor, and I, I we have a, um, we have to deliver the book at some time, and there, there was enough time to, to finish the book, as always. <laughs> but uh, I called him, and I told him, look, I'm going to watch Narcos season two. I'm going to stop writing the book. He almost killed me for that. But <laughs> and I just wrote an article, just make a short list about the big mistakes that I saw in the series. And I did that just like a, a reaction to mm. the second season. And it became very popular. I was surprised. Yeah. I was like, the statistics in Facebook was just... In three days, one million readers yeah. uh, of that article. 
So thanks to that, I, I called my editor and I said, we have a new chapter for the <laughs> book, because yeah. I think we will have a lot of readers interested yeah, yeah. in knowing uh, the mistakes. And of course, we, um, we took the same article and we changed, uh, because I start talking about the other movies and the other projects mm -hmm. about my father, not only and not, on, not exclusively about Narcos. Yeah. But I was very surprised because I even saw, like, uh, in the newspaper in, in India, you know, it's like speaking about me and my father and Narcos. It's like I never expected that kind of worldwide reaction. Mm. Just it was just 28 mistakes, not too much. Yes, you, you people love lists, and you have made a list of 28. Yeah. Mistakes yeah. from, I received from the second season. I received a message from one of the Facebook users, and he told me, "You forgot one." And I, I <laughs> asked him which, and he he told me, "Do you remember Benjamin Button?" Uh, yeah, yes, I do remember Benjamin Button, and he says, "You look like Benjamin Button because you are younger every day in the series." You know, it's like <laughs> <laughs> that's on the twenty twenty nine. Yes, mistake. yes. How was that to 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 watch yourself in the in the series? You are uh, they, appearing. They should hire a, a more good looking. Actor, <laughs> <yes>. <laughs> At least, but yes. they didn't do that. Well, sue them. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Okay, Juan Pablo Escobar, it's very nice to have you in Kristiansand, and it's been uh, very interesting uh, talking to you. No, thank I'm you sure very much. Everybody agrees with me, and uh, <coughs> and uh, you have made the history in the library. It's um, it's uh, more people than ever. Yes, collected right. here. Uh, thank you, thank you very much. And uh, to all of you, there are books for sale. On the first floor, up the stairs, and uh, and uh, Juan will be happy to to sign, sign the them book all. for you. Yes, yes. thank you and very uh, much. And remember, you have to buy both. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you very you. much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you.